Hello and welcome to another edition of the damn fine podcast that is insane in the Fembrane. Greetings one and all, welcome to the show. I hope you're all doing well. We're getting back out there, aren't we? Things are opening, they're opening up, slowly but surely we're getting out there. Gigs are coming back. Old Wilson's been gigging, having a great time. Before we get into the this week's show, um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our show that we've got coming up. Thursday the 17th of June, Rich Wilson presents Dark Horse Comedy Live Under the Stars. We're taking the Zoom gig and adding more cameras, lights, a stage, and an intimate live audience. And it's still interactive on Facebook Live, so I'll be emceeing, but we'll have producer Paul be manning the screen, so you can get involved in the chat. You can you can, you can can heckle, producer Paul will relay to me what's going on, and you'll be part of the show even if you're not there. It's gonna be great fun. There is There are limited tickets to, to be there in the flesh, but that's all online when you apply for your ticket. So join MC Rich Wilson, which is me, Jen Brister, we've got Clinton Baptiste, who was the medium from the fabulous Phoenix Knights. We've also got Amy Cooper and the wonderful Vix Slater will be joining us as well. We've got priority access to tickets to be there outside at the Forum Subbridge Rolls and priority access to tickets for the live stream. Just submit your email address at darkhorsedigital.co.uk. No commitment, easy peasy. So do that for us, that'll be wonderful. Now, bit more admin because this podcast is supported by those wonderful boys at Save Our Souls Clothing, Stacey and Mark, good lads doing good things. Uh, if you go to sosclothing.co.uk forward slash membrane and use the 50% discount, discount code membrane, you get money off their range plus the membrane tees and hoodies. So do that for us because they're good lads doing good things. You'll love their stuff. It's really good quality, it's ethically sourced, and even the ink is vegan friendly. So what's not to love? You're not giving your money to child slavery, you're giving it to two great lads in South End, supporting small businesses that are doing big things. Anyway, on with the show. This week, I'm joined by the wonderful uh, comedian, Nicola Stephen. Um, I, I'll be honest, I'd never met Nicola before. Uh, and so I always worry when, I, when I'm talking to someone on the podcast, I always worry, what, are we going to connect? Is it going to be good? Um, because, you know, what you don't know is that sometimes there there have been a couple of people that we haven't really connected that well with. Oh, you can, not very often does that happen, but it's not gone It's not gone as we thought it might. And so you kind of go, oh, that, is that going to be, you know, is that going to be, can we put that out? I don't really know. And, but Nicola was spectacular from the off. She was such a joy to talk to. You'll get, you'll hear that in the episode. She really is a phenomenal human being. She just, the, the conversation just rattles along to the point we got a bit giddy and we kept like talking over each other. We were just too excited. But she's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And I can't wait for you to hear the episode. In fact, let's just get on with it. So coming up in a bit is Nicola Stephen. A podcast from producer Paul.co.uk. Good to see you, Nicola. You all right? Yeah, good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I love your shirt. Oh, thanks. It's actually a gift from my girlfriend. Oh, Our really? First Christmas together. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, how's it been? How's, how have you found it all? The lockdown and everything. How's your marbles, mate? Uh, yeah. I mean, I actually think I'm the most mentally sound I've been in years right now. Yeah. But it's been each lockdown has had its own different way of affecting me. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> what about you? Yeah. Same. I was. I've said this a few times. Hang on. Um, the the first one, I was strangely zen about it all. I was like, mm. oh, well, it is what it is. You can't help it. We were all locked mm. in, you know, and then I think, I think as it went on, it, 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 the, the, the next lockdown and then the, the, the not really knowing what was happening and then mm-hmm. people on people on social media were saying, oh, I'm going out anyway. Oh, I don't, this is all in. It, oh, just, it yeah. starts getting in your head. Mm-hmm. People were getting frustrated and that's when I started to kind of, I had to sort of step away from it all and go, right, I just need to do what I think is right. And mm-hmm. hopefully, it's, you know, like just keep away from everyone and, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I did pretty much the same, to be honest, mate. Like, mm. I I found it, um, I mean, I was doing my own special kind of isolation in January and February anyway, because I was having a bit of a depressive spell. Yeah, right. Uh, 
uh, I was living with somebody who was an absolute nightmare. Mm. And um, I I just work... I'm a freelance designer as well as a comedian. Okay. So my work was quiet anyway. It, it's always quiet in January and February. Mm. But um, I kind of, like, was started, like, easing myself into social life. And then lockdown came in. Yeah. Uh, so I I can't even say that I made the most of it in the first part <laughs> of 2020. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah. It was um, it was a weird time, and then I guess my depressive state kind of eked into that first bit um, of the lockdown mm. when it all started happening. And I did the same. I was like, okay, right. I don't. I'm not a big fan of the Tory government. I don't no, really. You'd be, mad. Um, you'd be mad if you were. To be fair. <laughs> exactly. No disrespect. No disrespect to anyone listening that is a fan. <laughs> But, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't want to isolate anybody. Yeah, but yeah, it's, but... They're not my number one pick. No. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I kind of uh, was struggling with a lot of the stuff they were saying anyway. And mm. me and my partner, we kind of were like, well, we're sensible people. Uh, we're just going to do what we feel is best yeah. and like make things as good as we can in our environments because we don't know how long this is going to go on for. Yeah. And I think a lot of my mates took a longer to get round to the fact that it might not be just a couple of months. Like I had mates saying, oh, by, by summer, it's all going to be sorted. And now it's yeah. a summer later and we're still in this situation. This you know? is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what was happening. It kind of, yeah, the longer it went on, the more, it was just, like you say, it's the, it's the we were just unsure, weren't we? And mm-hmm. we were sort of mentally prepared for a couple of months and then it, you know, like a year later, we're still floundering. And mm. even now, even now, people are still tentatively going back out. Or, well, actually, mm. there's two types of gr- There's two groups. Some are like tentatively going out and going, like looking out after the storm going, are we all right? Whereas other people are just like <laughs> shoes on, out the door. Fuck it! Let's go and lick some eyeballs. And it's like yeah. everyone, all of us need to meet in the middle and just chill out a little bit. Let's just, let's, yeah, exactly. you, you know. It's, it's yeah, the funny medium one, is the safe space. Yes, I think. Yes, I mean, I like I I left London again. So I left London in the first lockdown, and I stayed with my mum for a bit because it wasn't safe to be in the house with that housemate. Yeah, right. Um, okay, yeah, was it that bad. He, um, yeah, so I mean, it is a bit of a story. Yeah, go but, for it. Um, <laughs> so he. Um, Without me and my other housemate knowing, was running an escort agency from our house. Holy shit. Yeah, I know. He started, like, when he came around to view the flat, yeah. he told me that he was in events. Um, well, he's not lying. <laughs> he's not lying. It's eventful. Uh, yeah. And that he also did a bit of massage on the on the side. <laughs> but okay. it, it was that he was a masseuse that did sex work, mm, basically. Okay. Which I'm like, you do you, whatever yeah, you feel yeah, comfortable yeah. with, that's cool. But don't do it in my house. Um, yeah, I mean that's don't it. Don't lie it's, about it. <laughs> yeah, it's different, isn't it? When it's your house and it's yeah, and you're not supposed and to I be think, coming and going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, that's throughout lockdown. There was like weird men all hours of the day and night. Um, the first one I met when I was in my pants and t-shirt when I'd got up in the middle of the night for a pee. Oh shit! Was, that's the it last was thing you really want. Really scary. Yeah, I yeah. got myself a lock on the door because I just I didn't know who these people were. I didn't, I, uh, and I'm sure he wasn't vetting them. Um, no, I wouldn't have thought so. Nah, and like oh, I mate. mean, he was. I think if it, if he was sound, I probably would let that bit go a bit because mm. I'd be like, well, I'm sure he's cool. Like he knows what he's doing, but he yeah. was. And I don't like to use this word lightly, but he was mental. He was right, properly yeah, got mental. You. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like he, he had a lot. I think he had like personality disorder and he was a heavy drug user. Fuck, okay. Again. Yeah. Cool, but like it's try quite and the, do something yeah. to help yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is, combination. Yeah. But that's the thing. <laughs> um, when I think people, when people have got, oh, oh it seem to have that like person that, you know a personality disorder because they're unaware of it they don't realize and you and the more you say to them mate i think yeah. you need to go and have this i think this is happening they just mm. get defensive and start saying it's you yeah. like, no 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 this oh, is God, you you're, yeah. and you're like whoa all right oh, well i can't deal with this then i don't know what to do exactly you know? yeah. yeah i mean i tried to address it with them a couple of times not necessarily the mental illness stuff because mm. we didn't know each other we're strangers we like we met 
through a friend sending on saying, oh, this guy's looking for a place to live. And mm. I was in a bit of a rush to find people. Which right, was yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh, he seems fine. <laughs> uh, but it just, um, yeah, I tried to address his like antisocial behaviour because he got quite volatile. Oh, and shit. Um, yeah, it was just his drug use was getting out of control mm. and his, his behaviour around the house was really quite scary to be right. honest and yeah. after a while like I once or twice I was like oh please can you not do this because blah 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 and um he would act totally normal in that moment and be like of course sorry I didn't realize mm. uh, but after a while th- there was just no engaging with him at all yeah um so yeah eventually I thought fuck this I'm not gonna live like this anymore nah. especially with like the lockdown and stuff looming yes um so i spoke to my landlord and i said look this guy is completely out of control he's doing sex work from the house wow. can you sort it so he he asked him to leave but he barricaded himself in the flat oh my god he, yeah like so we were supposed to leave at the end of march so we'd already been in lockdown for about 10 days at this point and um i in the <laughs> in te- in those 10 days i knew that he was supposed to be leaving at the end of the month mm. and he knew I don't know if you knew that I knew, but neither of us were talking. We had 10 days where it was just us in the house oh. with this weird sort of secret looming over us and uh, very strange circumstances. Stressful. We were just like avoiding each other. Oh, yeah. my God, yeah. A really stressful start to a really stressful oh. year. <laughs> um, oh, and so I just um, escaped to Somerset and, and stayed with my mum for a bit, uh, nice. which was just what I needed. And I'm back in Somerset now, actually. Oh, right, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm moving yeah, nice. in with my girlfriend, which oh, is right. be great. Yeah, lovely. But she's buying, so it's just the completion date keeps getting pushed. Ah, uh, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah. quite nice being out in the countryside, you know. Um, yeah. I think it's what's contributing to my good mental health, to be honest. Oh, absolutely. Well, this is it. The first lockdown, we were living in Leon Sea, which is in near uh, South yeah. End, and so and we were right on the water's edge. So it's where the Thames goes out to sea. So you had that wonderful view and just space. It was really nice, you know, really nice. So I don't know. Lovely. I know people that were in London and big cities, and they just said mm. if it wasn't the fact that they had a park nearby, they would have really suffered. So oh, I think totally, it's good, you know, yeah. especially Somerset. Somerset's beautiful. I was, in, I was, oh, I've literally just got back from there. I was in. Um, oh really? Yeah, I was near Froome. I was in. A, I did a couple of gigs in uh, Melksham and uh, Road. <laughs> Which is nice. That's so weird. Well, yeah. Melksham is where I had my first design job out of uni. Oh, really? And like, no one's ever heard of it. <laughs> I always put Bath. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. I had to get the train to Bath and then get <laughs> yeah. the bus out. And what happened? Well, I, I got the I got the gigs around the wrong way because I was the, the the gig the next night was in Road and we were staying in Road, mm-hmm. but the, the first gig was Melksham. But I went to Road. And I'm like, oh, shit, I need to get the bus back to Bath then. And I'm looking, it's like hour and 40 on the bus. I'm like, oh, my oh my God, I've really fucked up here. But out of nowhere, a taxi arrived. I didn't even call a taxi. Just <laughs> arrived. That's how great Somerset is. You just, <laughs> if you just, if you, I think it might have been on a ley line or something like that, some hippie shit. And I just, yeah, like, yeah, totally. magicked up a, a taxi and he took me to Melksham, which was lovely. Well, that's, that's yeah, brilliant. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. No, so Bath is, that, is a really beautiful city. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm. I had a wander around there yesterday. It was really nice. Mm. Yeah, lovely. Oh, man. I should yeah. have come and seen your gig. Well, this <laughs> is it. I didn't, I've got to be honest, I forgot that I had them in. I just, it was only because. <laughs> My mate Jared, whose books they are, uh, gigs they are, rang uh, messaged me the, the day before with the details. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, I better go. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. So where about oh, so where about are you in Somerset? I'm in a sleepy little town called Wincanton. Oh, I know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or as I called when I was a teenager, Wank Cunt Town. Of course. Because uh, <laughs> I was very mature. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I hated it here when I was a kid. Um, well, when I was a kid, I liked it. But uh, teenage to 20s, I mm. hated it. Yeah, yeah, what was it like growing up there? And especially, because this is the thing with small towns. They, 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 mm. they can be quite insular and so mm-hmm. growing up i mean you already don't feel like you fit in anyway but yeah. what was that when you were discovering you know like you're working out your sexuality working out who you are how did that how well, did that fly it was it was a very weird time mm. um i actually i was talking about this in therapy the other day oh yeah uh, i decided that i needed to settle some things in my mind cool um cool. yeah <laughs> and um I actually had a, 
a like very clear moment when I was about eight and I was I was either co- going to uh, France or coming back from France on a ferry with my family and I don't know what caused this thought to like pop into my head but I was like if I was gay things would make so much sense yeah and then right. it, as quickly as it came in it left yeah uh, but the thing is I'm not I'm not gay I'm bi um, okay and in Somerset I I knew no bi people whatsoever mm. I only knew a couple of gay blokes and like knew of some gay women um but I didn't know anybody that was like me yeah and so it was quite weird because I was like well I do like blokes but there is something I, yeah. I don't fit into that box. Um, so it did take me a long while to even admit it to myself. Yeah. Um, and then I met my first girlfriend when I was nineteen, and that's what caused me to come out. Yeah, right. Um, but it was uh, it was weird. There was there's a just a lot of like, I mean, the people around here are, like they're lovely, but there's like also a bit of a fear of the unknown yes so yeah, there's yeah. a lot of subtle sexism racism homophobia transphobia yeah. um they've all got like one bloke that's all right that's like one of those things <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> but, yeah like yeah it's um it is a weird time it was a really weird time for me mm. um and then yeah meeting my first girlfriend it kind of clarified a lot yeah. And I think um, I ended up staying with her for a lot longer than we should have been together. Oh, yeah, I get um, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it was just like, well, she helped me so much. And I was also, I was a bit of a heavy drug user when we met. Right. And I straightened myself out within our relationship. So I kind of felt like I owed her. <laughs> yeah, know? I get that. Yeah, I understand that completely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's funny. We had a uh, spoken word um, artist on uh, 1990s Chris, and he's bisexual. And we were talking. I'd never really had a conversation with someone who was bi before mm-hmm. because you there is that. It's never really been spoken about. Not really. Not, not mm. most of it because I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. So I'm of a different generation where these things didn't really get spoken about like trans it was it was mm. just a, a simple thing of oh they're a man but they want to be a woman and that's really all that was said yeah and there weren't many many that we knew about there was like not many trans people around and the mm. same with bisexuality it was just a case oh they like both and that was it but talking to chris mm. you start to it, it's, it's like and, and talking to you now it's there's more to it than that it's there's, it's more complex than just oh I can have sex with whoever I want you know it's yeah far there more was complicated. This myth know? of it like it, the first thing when I'd say I was bi to people would be like oh you're greedy like ha, ha, yeah ha, exactly ha. yeah 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 or that it's not a real sexuality it's a stop on the way to gay town or whatever mm. um, but <laughs> like I I do I really do love men and I really do love women I yeah. happen to only have had serious relationships with women i'd say i like i call myself a demi-gay because i'm a bit more gay than i am bi right. i think yeah uh, but i think the thing is it's all a scale isn't it i think everybody's on the the spectrum in one way or the other oh for sure like you're, yeah. you're a heterosexual man i am but i'm sure there's certain men that you you think hello mate yeah <laughs> i do a whole bit in my set about oh, when yeah. I, wo- I worked in a gay sauna and mm. i had to pretend i was gay and then this, and then this guy, this guy, I became friends with a guy in there, and he said, "I want to spend the night with you." And I went, right. and I panicked. I'm like, oh, "Shit, I need the job. I need the money. I don't know what I'm going to do." And panicking, I said, "You can nosh me off for a hundred quid." <laughs> and then, and he went, so he went hundred quid, and I'm like, "I'm like, yeah," and I'm like, "Take the pick." <laughs> so then this became our thing. He'd come in and like, oh, "I find hundred quid," and I'm like, "I know, mate. If you had hundred quid, eh? What we could do, the things we could do." <laughs> and then he came in one day with a hundred quid. And I'm like, oh, fuck, now what am I going to do? Like, I need the job, I need the money. And then we ended up in a cupboard, and, uh, yeah, he noshed me off for 100 quid. But the thing <laughs> is, like he, do you know what? It's one of the best blowjobs I've ever had. I bet. <laughs> it, was, it was spectacular. I've never really spoken about this before. It was, I've, mm-hmm. I've done it in my set, but I've never really discussed mm-hmm. it. It was, it was magnificent. And mm-hmm. the, what happened was the reason he wanted to do it, and because he, he knew I was straight, he knew right. he, they'd cottoned on because I wasn't joining in with everything that was going on. Oh, of course, and so, yeah. And so then, yeah, so he, this, and because when we finished, he went, you're straight. We all know you're straight. And I went, how do you, how do you know? He went, everyone's talking about it. You don't join in. The other staff 
members here, they all join in. They're all getting told off all the time to join in. But you never do. No one's seen you on the scene. You've got this weird story about living with a girl, but you've got a boy on the side. Everyone knows you're full of shit, mate. You're, you're straight. He goes, and I just wanted, I wanted to do this because, like, you know, I sucked off a straight dude. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I didn't know that was a thing. But it was. It was such, it was so good. And then a couple of weeks later, he said, you're up for money. And I'm like, I'm a bit strapped. He went, would you want to do it again? I went, are you really? He went, mate, he goes, I'd love to. And I'm like, all right then. So we did it again. <laughs> but it's, it was, it's, a, it's one of the best blowjobs I've ever had. And I never, when we were doing it, I didn't look yeah. at him. I was kind of looking up and then I was thinking about the stuff that I like. Mm-hmm. But it did make me, it made me realise that, yeah, I'm not gay, but a blowjob is a blowjob and it, it yeah. doesn't matter who's giving it. It's going to be spectacular. Mm-hmm. And it really was. And even now, sometimes I'm like, I wonder what he's doing. You know, yeah. just like, just to do it again. <laughs> yeah, but totally. And, yeah. And you're no less straight than you were before that no, happened. No, no, no. It's I think, just yeah. that. Yeah, it, it's, it is. Yeah. Even straight people are on a spectrum of some sort. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I think it's. I think there is that. There is it, the, the discussion about being fluid is is never mm-hmm. come up. But that's a that's a new conversation. Before mm-hmm. it was just like you're either gay or you're straight or you're bi or you know or whatever. But now it's like, do you know what? Sometimes I've I've had hugs with mates, and they and I have that, and I'm like, oh god, that's a good hug. It's just mm-hmm. like, oh yeah. So it's more about contact. Sometimes. I'll, uh-huh. I, I smell, I'll, I'll get, I'm really into like, like nice aftershaves and, and perfume and things like that. So if a smell really catches me, I will say to that person, I know this is weird, but you smell spectacular. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just, and I think there is that sometimes it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the sexuality or it doesn't matter about gender. Mm. No, it's just, no, it's more about people. And I think that's what we're going into more now. Yeah. Which is I nice. mean, I think like in in the past that was a, a thing as well. Like it was it wasn't there wasn't such binary um language when it came mm. to sexuality and pleasure. And I think the more so now we're heading back to that. And I think p- some people are scared of it, but I think it's a much safer place to live in where where you don't have those like restraints like coming out. Yeah. <laughs> like you have to keep coming out as a queer person. Yeah. And I'm I it fills my heart with joy to think of kids that are like me that like they can just be talking about men and women and people will just know mm. and it won't need to be a conversation because yeah. that I didn't want to have that conversation whatsoever I just wanted people to know but I didn't want to have to have that conversation yeah yeah um but you do you did I mean this was back in 2006 or something like that yeah right yeah. um so it was a, li- a long while ago yeah, but um, we, well, that's it, isn't it? We're out, it's only. I was saying this yesterday. I was talking to someone else, and we were just saying that we're kind of we're like the first sort of generations that are having these conversations. Yeah. So it's it's all very it's very new about you know the fact that you it's it's less so now I imagine, but it's it, and it's only just started. Like you say, like having to build up the courage to to come um, out, you know. Whereas it shouldn't be a thing. It should just. Yeah. Like you say, just based on what you're talking about, and and yeah. who you and who you are, people should just know. Yeah, you know? I think it, I think we are heading in that way, and mm. I mean, like I didn't actually, I didn't. There wasn't like a big deal with um, my dad. I think he found out from somebody else because I mean, at the, the time when I was coming out, we had a bit of a strained relationship. Right. Um, so he just found out and was fine actually. Um, it was actually like one bit of really good parenting I've received from him. <laughs> <laughs> he was he's been always been super accepting of my partners and that's yeah. really nice. But I had quite a, a shit coming out with my mum. Right. Um I'd kept it I'd been in a relationship for probably about a year and a half and I'd kept I'd lit and I lived with her in a one bed flat and I'd kept it from my mum that we were together I was like oh I've got a futon in the living room like come on mate (laughs) (laughs) you're you're an idiot like she knows this woman's a lesbian and you're you um and so when I finally came out to her she said I know and it was kind of cold and then she left and wow. that was horrible. Yeah. And she actually, it was really lovely. Like a few years ago, we were, she came to visit me for my birthday in July in um, London. Mm. And she apologized for the way that she reacted. Oh, wow. And it was, 
like I didn't realize that I needed that apology so much. Yeah, it, of course. It made such a difference in our relationship. We got a lot closer as yeah. a result of that. Um, well, yeah, lovely. it was really nice. I used to have a bit in, well, I still sometimes use it because I do think it's funny, uh, where I said that um, I thought my mum was hom- homophobic for the first nine years of me being out. It turns out she just really hated my first girlfriend. <laughs> and it's funny because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so your sexuality wasn't the issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, it's funny, isn't it? With, like, my, my mum and dad very open minded and you know though and I, I i know now that if i'd have if i'd have you know if i was gay it wouldn't mm-hmm. have been an issue it would have been it, they would have been completely fine i know with my lads i've said this on here before it got mm-hmm. to a point where i kept saying to them i was like look you know if you ever want to talk to me about anything or i just want you to know that this is this is open and, and i will never judge you I, i'm always i've always whatever it is i'll always be there for you to the point where they were, my eldest went dad for the last time i'm not gay <laughs> will you stop? Will you stop it? It's just like I just wanted to make sure, hundred percent, that you knew it was all completely fine. It's all know? good. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's great. Yeah, I think annoy your kids into coming out to you. <laughs> Imagine that. Way. Just say I'm gay. He never was. He never was. Just to keep me quiet. <laughs> all right, Dad. <laughs> all okay. right, fine. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was yeah. looking. I was looking at your. So you've got, you've got your podcast. Mm-hmm. And what's your podcast called? I'm still standing. That's it. Yes. Yeah. And it and I, and I saw it, it's deal, it deals with it's about trauma and how you've dealt with it and your guests that mm-hmm. come on and talk about their trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, what I mean, what is that? What have you? I mean, I don't, is this the thing? How do you ask? How do you ask? So what the fuck happened then? You, know, so, you, know, you can't do that. <laughs> well, I mean, I've had a bunch of traumas. So the the thing that I told you about my housemate that was yes. what really um, inspired me to start this podcast, and um, it was. Yeah, the the first series was kind of me before I got therapy, mm. doing a bit of therapy on my own. And it, it really did help me to start doing therapy. So yeah. it got me used to talking to people on Zoom openly. And um, yeah, like my, my parents divorced when I was about 12. Well, they, they separated when I was 12. It took them six years. That was quite yeah, traumatic. Yeah, right. Wow. Um, and there's a bunch of other things um and I just realised that I, when, like, I'm I'm quite a chatty person. I love a good talk mm. and I like a big talk rather than a small talk. Yeah. I uh, hate small talk. But I know what you mean. I would not really deal with the big stuff properly. Yeah. I would try and push it down, act like it's not happening, and then it would come out in all these weird ways, like extended drug use and heavy drinking mm. and... A lot of time in bed, not bathing, um, yeah, right. you know, yeah. all that stuff. Um, but it, it, this, the podcast really helped me to just kind of be honest when I'm feeling a bit shit, you know. Yeah. And my mum actually texted me the other day, said, like, because she went out to work and she was like, Are you all right? You like you seemed a little bit off, and I, usually I'd be like, Oh, I'm fine. But I said, No, actually, I'm I'm having a bit of a down day. I'm feeling quite depressed. Yeah. Um, so I just was honest. And then that night we did something nice. And that was, and if I hadn't, maybe she wouldn't have said mm. to do something. And so it's, it is um, amazing how much it's helped me. Um, and I even, like, so I was recording one of these last week and I, it was on that day that I was having a down day. And I was like, oh, fuck it. I can't, I can't do it. My, my head's too cloudy. And I just thought, do you know what? I've had this in the books for weeks now. Let's yeah. just do it. And it did me the world of good. Oh, for sure. It was really yeah. lovely. Because you must feel with these, like, you get a lot off of your chest. Oh, God, yeah. This is this has been the best thing I've ever done in mm-hmm. terms of getting to know myself and yeah. and people, getting to know how people really are and, and asking, yeah. asking, this is a safe space for me to ask questions like, mm-hmm. you know, so what does it feel like to be trans? What really, what really goes on? What mm. do you feel like? talking to women about what it's like to be a woman and things like that and Mm -hmm. without looking you know and I don't know sometimes I don't have the right words I don't have the right vocabulary I don't know how to ask the questions so it'll Mm -hmm. come out like we talk about trauma just then I'm like well go on what the fuck you know you just don't you you know I'm not I'm not trained at this but this Mm -hmm. is a safe enough space I think people understand they get that my intentions are pure. I'm not here to. Absolutely. I'm not here to upset I'm here to learn and then people that listen will also learn some stuff. 
Exactly. Yeah, you're not a lucky Lou. You're not like just because no. I always worried that this would be like trauma porn. That I would mm, be like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I, I with every single one that I've done because I did it with some friends as well as performers, and I've said, look, we'll talk about everything, and you be as open and honest as you feel comfortable with. And if you share too much in the moment, just let me know, and I can take it out. But yeah, nobody so. has has taken anything out, and I've been so thankful to everybody being so open yeah um and i i really loved doing it so as soon as i i was like right i've got to do a second series so absolutely we'll do, yeah this series i'm going to be doing like focused episodes so there's um yeah we're going to be doing addiction and right. homophobia and eating disorders and stuff like that yeah um, ptsd all sorts oh um, wow well, yeah are, yeah, yeah it's I think, great yeah. But these are things that need to be talked about. Mm. But I think you've hit the nail on the head by, yes, we need to talk about them, but not in a, in a like you say, like not in a gratuitous way. It's not, mm. we're not just talking about it to talk about it. We're actually talking about yeah. it so we can actually help and do something about it. Because I know there's, there's so, again, sort of someone the other day and they were going, there's a lot of this, like, oh, my ADHD, my this, my that. And you go, yeah, mm. okay, I get that. But there's some people... Now, I mean, I don't mean to dis be disrespectful. I don't mean that at all. But some people are kind of using it. They're kind of already flaky, and they're already they're going and, they're, and it's just giving them an excuse to be a bit more flaky. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I can't do that because I'm feeling this. And you go, come on, I, yeah, 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 I, totally. yeah, you know. And so, us just talking about it doesn't really help. It's like, okay, let's talk about it, mm. and then talk about how we how we've managed it, and hopefully yes, yeah. that is that will someone will get something from that you know oh absolutely i wish um podcasts and definitely like podcasts about mental health was around when my brain was forming because yeah. i think if i understood that it wasn't i just thought i was this neurotic mess um i didn't know that a lot of people had the same anxiety as me yeah um so it i it felt quite isolated i already felt different because i was queer in a rural place and then yes. i had the anxiety on top of it um i feel I'm really grateful that they exist now and I'm glad that the kids that are feeling like they're alone feel mm. a little less alone. God, that sounded wanky. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but that's it. It's, that's the thing. Again, I think through through the podcasts, you know, mm -hmm. we are starting to realise that actually the, the, the mad, weird thoughts that we have are actually quite normal. We're actually, mm. all of us, like, I, I've, I've mentioned this many times on here, and we talk about when you start counselling or when you when you mm. when they are in their assessing you to see what sort of counselling you need or sort of therapy you need. And they'll say, have you had suicidal thoughts? And yeah. and I started to, and I, and I, when I first, I first told a friend of mine that I'd had them, and then he mm. said, yes, have I. And if someone else would, yes, have I. Then more people do have them. It's mm -hmm. it, 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 on different it's levels. It's just not talked about. It's just not talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So there's this stigma attached to the fact that, you know, a counsellor will go, so have you had suicidal thoughts? And then so we're like, oh, God, if, if yeah, I have. Does that mean I'm, oh, God, yeah. does that mean I'm crazy? Does this mean I'm this or that? We go, mm. no, it means you're, it means you're, you have empathy and you are yeah. sensitive. You're affected. You're, you're yeah, affected, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the first, yeah, the first time I got asked that when I was being assessed, I just said no. Like, it's not, yeah, right. not mental. I was so <laughs> terrified that I was going to get sectioned as soon as I started being actually honest. So my yeah, first yeah. set of counselling was not that effective because I was holding back a bit. Um, but as I've done it more and more, I'm like, I'm on my third counsellor now and right. I'm m much more open with her. Like, I've only had two sessions with her, but we dug into stuff really quickly, mm. um, which is amazing. I had to actually break up with my old therapist because really? um, i felt she was bringing her own shit to the <laughs> sessions <laughs> she yeah. kind of got a bit short with me and i was like do you know what i don't know if this is the best thing for me <laughs> <laughs> well i had that so with I, my yeah i had that with my oh, my last you? one yeah but well, yeah he was but sitting, i think that's yeah. like a really good sign that you're like oh i'm recognizing what my needs are and doing mm. something about it yes i was actually really proud of myself for being like <laughs> you're not what I need anymore. But I did thank her. I was like, but it's because of the work we've done. Yeah. That, um, yeah. Sorry, I cut you off there. What no, no, no. I, I kind of got excited and spoke over you. I do apologise. <laughs> we were both, this, because I, yeah. you know what? It's funny because we, we've never met before. And, no. and so when, whenever, normally when I have people on, I've kind of, 
I've had an interaction with them or I've met them yeah. or you know so but this is this is brand new so I was like oh Ooh. I don't know I don't we don't know each other so I was like wondering how it's gonna <laughs> go but the energy's already brilliant it's already like yeah. oh my god why haven't we spoken before this is and now we're all excited and it's great <laughs> oh, no. I love it. Yeah, beaming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my cat is just asking to come in. I yeah, 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 go on. That's all right, yeah. Come on, I was going to ask her about that. It sounded like a cat was being sick in there, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it was? I had a cat. Um, I've heard a fly. Or could oh, be I heard a, a fly. Oh, yeah. I thought that was in here. And some uh, birds and stuff. I mean, it's almost transporting us to, uh, yeah, the countryside. You're getting a little taste of the countryside. Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Back to it. Back to it. Yeah, he, he may interrupt. I'm sorry, he is quite vocal. That's why I had him outside, but he was determined to come in. <laughs> Here we are. That's all right. That's, ah, there he is. <laughs> yeah. It was funny with the flyer because I thought it was in here. I there didn't was, even hear it. I was like... Um, <laughs> next, next podcast, I'm going to play one in as a sound effect. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what sort of cat is it? He's um black and white short for... Moggy type thing. Yeah, right. He's a big fat cat. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear, through lockdown, if I didn't have him, I would have gone insane. It's funny with pets, isn't it? Yeah, I grew mm. up. We grew up. When I grew up, we had cats. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more of a dog person, and I've oh, just yeah. done. And I just did these gigs. Well, I don't. I think I just love animals, really. Yeah. I just did these gigs with Jared Christmas, and he's got a little pug, a little black pug called Mavis. Oh. And <laughs> honestly, Mavis and I just fell in love. We've just been hugging <laughs> for the last two days, just Aww. hugging and licking each they other. They are so cute. Yeah. It's so, yeah. I think it's, it is. It's just having that other, another, and something around to keep you company. Yeah, another heartbeat. Yes. You know. and I, I got thinking about this this morning, actually, because I'd done this. I hadn't done it in a long time. Um, I used, I lay on his belly and listen to it as oh, like nice. a soothing thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I remembered I actually used to do that with my mum when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. Like maybe it's like wanting to go back into the womb. Things were yeah, a lot maybe. simpler then. <laughs> I, think that, <laughs> I think it is, yeah, there is a soothing thing to that, isn't there? That just that. Mm. Yeah. It's just yeah, it's a nice feeling, isn't it? Just that hearing that. Mm. Yeah, it's lovely. So, so I mean, like, like I said, I've had therapy. I'm about to mm -hmm. go. I'm, I'm about to have some more. I've booked okay. some in, which is just because there's just been it's been quite a traumatic year, and there's been stuff that's gotcha. happened that I need to go and unpack. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think you know this comes up a lot on here, obviously. And uh, there is, I think, people just going and talking to someone outside of your life and just going yeah. look. And being honest with them as well, that's the t that's the key. Because I know people that's that... That's the hard part. Yeah, people that, I know people that have had therapy for a long time. And they were saying, oh, I can do this now and I can do that now. I'm like, I don't think you're being honest with mm. your therapist. You have to be... You have to be honest and admit. You go, look, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not... I don't think I'm perfect. This is, this is, this is the, the problem, I think. Mm -hmm. And then they'll tell you what you need to know. Yeah. You know, definitely. Like, yeah. show, you've got to like reveal your ugliest parts. Basically, the stuff yeah. that keeps you up at three a.m. Yeah. Like that stuff needs to come out. It, like, it's only going to get more and more toxic the more you keep it in. Yes. Uh, but it is very hard. No, like being able to fully trust somebody in that way. Mm. Um, even yeah. if you don't have trust issues, it's just it. It basically making yourself completely vulnerable. Yeah. And that's something, it's just a bit icky, isn't it? Well, this is it. Well, we were, well my ex and I were having couples counselling. Mm -hmm. And and we were, and at one point the counsellor said, she said, you do seem to be overly worried about what I think of you, Rich. Mm -hmm. And I went, yeah, yeah, I said, that is a problem. I do worry. I have this this mad, I need to be liked by everybody. And it upsets mm -hmm. me when I'm not. Yeah. And I said, I don't know where that comes from. And she just, and she kind of unpacked that for me. But yeah, you do. You've got to not worry about your the therapist isn't judging you and sitting there going, "Oh, what a piece of shit." You're there because they want to help you. So if you do, if there are bits of you that you are a bit of a piece of shit, they'll help you <laughs> navigate that. Yeah. If you want to be less of a piece of shit, you've got to <laughs> take out, like, say the things that make you a piece of shit, and then yeah. you can work them out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing that's my like it, when i'm feeling like super depressed that's my internal monologue you're a piece of shit you're a piece of shit yeah and um there it's it becomes so much so that like when i'm in that headspace i won't talk at all right about stuff i'll talk about 
meaningless shit, but I yeah. won't talk about real stuff. But that's but that's I the thing. Got yeah, got there for a while. That's which is good. <laughs> well, this is the, I've said this before as well. That if you're lying on your and I've said this is a bit of material, but it, I think it's true. Like if you're lying on your bed and you're thinking, "Oh my god, I'm a bit of a cunt," mm -hmm. you're not a cunt because cunts don't think that way. They're cunts. No. So if uh -huh. you're if you're thinking that way, I bet you, I bet you, you're not. You're not a piece of shit at all. <laughs> you know, you and and we can all be cunty. At times, mm -hmm. we can all do that, but it doesn't mean you're fundamentally that you're a cunt. You know, yeah. it's that's the difference. Yeah. The fact that you're yeah. thinking about it. We're we're multifaceted people. There's many yeah. different sides to us. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure at the moment I'm I'm not feeling like I'm a piece of shit. No. I'm actually feeling quite positive, which is great. Good. But um, I'm just trying to ride this uh, positivity. <laughs> um, I actually I like I because I've, I've said for I've been doing comedy since well probably about three years or something okay and uh, that whole time i've been my mental health has been up and down up and down and i've never felt comfortable enough to do a competition mm. even though i'm like i do good i'm i'm yeah. a funny person you know i get um, I, do you know so what I, I get that vibe from you i reckon you're all right actually yeah <laughs> thanks mate <laughs> um so i was like right I'm going to enter a contest. So I've done it and I'm doing one in July. Nice. And I can't fucking wait. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. But that, yeah. this is it. it it's like I'm fundamentally a shy person. So the fact mm -hmm. that I get up and do stand up blow still to this day blows my mind to the point mm -hmm. now, because I've been going like 17 years now mm -hmm. my, I'm, I feel more comfortable on stage doing my, doing my thing than I do in real life. Because uh -huh. up, up there, I don't have to worry about, real life all i have to do mm. is worry about it's not even about attention it's about being in this bubble of i'm just making people laugh and i'm having fun mm -hmm. i don't have to worry about bills and any other shit yeah. that's going on you know it's quite it's a nice place to be and yeah you know, yeah it feels quite serene when it does when you've got a, a whole room full of people laughing at something you've said yes it's, um yeah, yeah. i like it <laughs> and and I reckon I can feel it. I reckon I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna check you out because I reckon you're I reckon you're right. great. Yeah, you got a good vibe. <laughs> good vibe. You got a good vibe. But it's thanks, but, man. So do you. No, thank you. <laughs> but what got you into it? What made you want to do comedy? I have been a comedy nerd forever, mm. and it's like even before I was doing comedy, I was listening to like uh, comedians, comedian. And oh yeah, 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 yeah. Loads of different podcasts about how you you do comedy. And I, yeah, I would squat up about any like new names I heard about. And I, I actually was told when I was 19, oh, the way you tell a story is like a stand up. Like you All should try right. it. I was told it by a very creepy older bloke. So I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't <only> apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, it fed into my ego. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. fucking funny. Um, but I just, I was in Somerset until I was 28 and then I moved to London um, and I just, I was like, do you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I met this woman at a club and she, I didn't realize she was a comedian. Um, right. I just wanted to go out with her. So <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, we ended up being really good mates and she was like, you're the funniest non-comedian I've ever met. And wow. I was like, actually, I really want to do comedy. And so she put me on on her show. So my first ever gig was at the Bill Murray. No way. Yeah, it was what? amazing. Yeah. It was like a sold out night. It, it felt incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. That's like mm. me. I started at, um, I, was a, I was the resident em every Friday up the creek when it was in, mm -hmm. used, they used to have one in Croydon because my, oh, yeah. my ex-partner used to run it. And, and, and because of that, because I did that, that that gig, I thought all gigs were like that. So then I'd go off and do an open mic somewhere. And I'm like, oh my god, this is dog shit. Why am I? Why am I here? Just get spoilt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, my next gig was in a basement of a cafe in Brixton. It was quite a different vibe. There you go. But it was still yeah. good. It was yeah. still good. <laughs> Just good to be doing yeah. it, isn't it? It's good to be doing it. Oh man, yeah, totally. I I really miss it. I'm actually in the process of starting. Well, I found a venue. I'm because I do this night sub fun. Yes. Um, which is a lot of fun. 
despite the name <laughs> and loads <laughs> of people so think fun. it's got like a sexual element to it i just thought it was funny to call a, a night sub fun <laughs> well I, you know it's funny when i looked i was because i was you know i always have a look and check mm -hmm. the guests out before we, before you come on and when i saw that i was like oh, okay <laughs> does that mean are we talking about <laughs> sub sub i was like okay no, 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 <laughs> yeah. not not at all not at all um no it's subjectively funny um uh, but sub fun for sure yeah yeah got you Got ya. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a, I'm doing outdoor gigs for the people that are a bit like me, a bit tentative about being in basements again yeah. um, in Broccoli. But um, I'm not in London at the moment, so I can't get them going. But I'm hoping by June. Uh, you'll have to come along be our token straight guy. Mate, I'd be honoured. <laughs> I'd be absolutely delighted. Absolutely <laughs> delighted. Do you know what? That's, that's funny that, that that's happening now. It's nice that it's going the other way where it used to be yeah. they'd have one woman on uh, yeah. or one, one person who was gay, you know, they were, yeah. or one, one person of colour. You know, and, and that's when I started in 2004. It was very much like that. And now it's like... It, yeah, it's very much, and absolutely, it should. There's like the one yeah, straight totally. guy. It's how it should be, mate. It's how it should be. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of weird when you see an all white lineup now. That's bizarre. Know? It's bizarre. It's yeah. like, have you not have you not seen the news, mate? You need to <laughs> you need to change this. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to be as diverse as possible. So I'm like going for people that have like disabilities or yeah. um, race or whatever. Just try like the only criteria for sub fun at the moment is be a woman or queer mm. to perform uh, yeah. but i'll make an exception for you rich thank you i'll just tell my <laughs> i'll tell my gay sauna story that just that'll just yeah, absolutely there you I love go. It. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it, isn't it? it it should be it should be more inclusive everything should be mm -hmm. you know and it's a shame that it's a shame that we are having to like make that extra effort it should mm. just be. But that's because things have just been so shit for so long. And yeah. without anyone, it, it just didn't occur to anybody. It's only now no. that everyone's going, actually, mate, that wasn't that wasn't great. And you go, oh, shit, yeah, sorry, I didn't. Yeah, it, it's strange. Yeah. Like, it's like this this fog is lifted from your eyes. You're like, oh, fuck, yeah. I'm part of the problem. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, what can I do? Yeah, and it's not because you yeah. don't give a shit. It's not because you're an arsehole. No, no. You're just wrapped up in doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. And I've had this, I've this conversation with my parents recently, or not them, not, uh, friends of theirs, and they and they were going, they were going, oh well, you know, I'm just sick of this now. It's you know, ramming it down our throats. Black people, gay people, so, oh, we get it, we get it. I'm like, no, 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 you don't get it yeah. because it's not been that way. <laughs> imagine, imagine growing up, you're a person of colour, or you're you're, mm -hmm. or you're gay or, or trans, and everything mm -hmm. on the television, every movie has been just straight white people. Mm -hmm. since the beginning of movies you know and it's yeah. like you know like black exploitation yeah where's my story where are my people and mm -hmm. and and then they're talking now about oh you know if it's a if it's the if the character's gay then it should be a gay actor playing that that character uh, and yeah and you're like well why yeah of course it's why it you... feels so strange now to like see um like what's the bloke's name in the danish girl like a a male actor playing that role that yeah. wasn't that long ago it seems fucking insane that that was the casting i'm sure he did a great job didn't yeah. see it but like come the fuck on <laughs> like what what do you think you're doing i know i know, I know, I know yeah. like, sorry we're both no no go on you, yeah, you do you do yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's just like um in recent years seeing um dating apps that are advertising to women because usually it would just be uh, uh if they were going to do a gay thing it would be two middle class white guys that would yeah. be the only thing but you're seeing a i mean it's still not enough but you're seeing a lot more of like two women on a date and yeah. like just normal adverts where it's a couple and it happens to be a female lesbian relationship like yeah. fucking brilliant and that's the point. It just happens to be that. Yeah. It's not a, it's like, um, oh, what's that TV show now? Oh God, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called. Is it a gay one? No, but the character in it is gay, <laughs> but it's not even a problem. It's not even a thing. Oh, okay. Like they haven't made it. It's not even like, it's not even part it's of the story. It's not the storyline. No, yeah. he just happens to be gay, which oh, is how it should know. be. And it's a, it's yeah, a totally. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got the guy, yeah. it's a comedy show. It's got the guy in it from This Is England, Joe Thingy Bob. Oh god, I can't remember what it's called. It'll come to me. It'll come to <laughs> me. But the character, yeah, yeah. yeah, but the character in it's gay, but it's not a thing. 
and that's how yeah, it should I be. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing, um, I'm a big fan of the, uh, oh God, the mess <laughs> <laughs> up my head now. Fucking hell, it's catching. Yeah, sorry. My mum works with loads of people with dementia and we feel like we're just like getting it by osmosis. Um, right. It's a Ryan Murphy one, and there was like a haunted house one. There was a circus one. Oh, were, um, yeah. Something haunted or something. <laughs> Fucking hell. Shit, I know what you mean. This is a terrible <laughs> podcast now. <laughs> There's no, no information. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a second one called Asylum, and yes. the main character was lesbian, and it just wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't the storyline. She just happened to be gay, and I. That was a real eye opener for me. Like. I was yes. like, oh fuck, that's really great. That it's not it's not part of the storyline, it's just part of it's, it's just, just part of it. That's what she is. And yes. um that was in like 2013, 14 or something. That's it. And I thought, brilliant. The haunting. <laughs> uh producer Paul's just put it up on the screen. It's the haunting. The haunting series. Yeah, the haunting series. Netflix Netflix answer to American horror. American Horror Story. American Horror Story, right? Oh yeah, well, yes. Ryan, yeah, Ryan Murphy. There you go. Ryan Murphy, yeah, yeah. There you go. And then the other one, I don't know what the other one was, but I'm sure producer Paul will find it. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. This is a, I, I can't remember his name. The jo, he... Joe, Joe Duggan, Joe. G oh, what was his fucking name? It's is, a. I want to the one that was also in Misfits. Yeah, him. Guy. Yeah, 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 him. Yeah. Uh, uh, Brassic. Yeah, Brassic. Joe Gilgan. We did That's, it. We yay. Did it. Well done, mate. <laughs> right. Just edit all that stuff out for <laughs> it. We'll, <laughs> we'll sound really on it. <laughs> of course I will. Of course I remember to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course you will. Of course you will. <laughs> well done, producer Paul. Um, yeah, but that's nice it. One. It should be, it's an irrelevance. Your sexuality mm. is irrelevant. You know, no one's, yeah. you don't see, you don't see all these stories and they're going, oh, by the way, they're straight. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. you know. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it doesn't need to be a thing. It just no. is. Yeah. yeah. So, do you identify as? Are you? A, are you? A, are you a they? Or are you a he or she? Like, I, what? Do I you... would say she. Mm. I. I guess I. I don't know. I. I have been thinking about this. Like, I. I love being a woman. I definitely do. But there's definitely more masculine traits to me. Mm. Um. But I go through phases. Sometimes I'll be a bit more masculine. Sometimes I'll be a bit more feminine. Yeah. Um. Just, just how I feel when I wake up, really. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't say that I. I. I like everybody. I'm a bit on a spectrum, but I'd say I'm. I'm female. Yeah. In a gay relationship. Yeah. Um, I think. I and think I also yeah. I say queer because, I I don't really see myself as gay, but I definitely I see myself as a bit more gay than bi. Yeah. So queer kind of covers it for me. It's funny how that word now is being you know, it's yeah. being reclaimed. Whereas you know, growing up, you know, when I was a kid, you know, oh, you're queer and all that sort of thing. And we talked yeah. about that with 1990s Chris. Actually, we were talking about that word. Oh yeah. And it's and it's yeah, it's fascinating that what queer actually means. You mm -hmm. know, because I didn't really know before. You just go, oh, yeah. it means you're gay, but yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an umbrella. I, I yeah. think it's um. I love that it's been reclaimed, you know, because I, I I remember being little and it being used as a slur and mm. like going in, now I'm in my mid thirties, I'm like, no, it's been reclaimed and it's got this whole new life. Yeah. And that's quite cool. Well, it makes I sense actually, as well, I, yeah. Yeah, totally. I, I I did this thing. So I, this is when I was working permanently in an, in an agency and I won't say which one um, <laughs> but uh i me and a lesbian that i worked with wanted to do a little talk about queerness on the week of pride yeah uh, because it was a predominantly straight environment and um there was a lot of heavy male toxic masculinity you know yeah, right so we thought why not just um go in and give a little bit of knowledge. Um, so we did this whole talk and we went through LGBTQIA and what it all means and all this other stuff. And at the end, it was really nice, actually. Loads of the blokes came up to us and said, oh, thanks so much for doing that because I really didn't know and I didn't know how to ask. And I yeah. said, well, I mean, I think this is the best way to do it. Do it in a fun way to educate people, make sure that everybody goes out there with a bit more knowledge mm. Um and uh, he, he took uh, my friend to one side and said, "So, um, can I can I call people queer?" 
And, <laughs> oh, and right. she said, like, I would leave it to them, but yeah. I said to her, like, you should have said, you can, but as long as it's not through gritted teeth. <laughs> like, <laughs> so yeah. It's all about your intention. Exactly. Uh, but I would leave it to the them to call themselves queer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. still yeah. that little bit, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I don't I mean, mind being called queer. I, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the, it's it, it's yeah. It's definitely up to the person to tell you mm. that they're queer rather than you ask mm. <laughs> you queer then. It's you it's queer. already yeah. You queer. <laughs> you queer. <laughs> yeah, especially with my accent it sounds terrible. Yeah, exactly. I always I find it funny thinking about um like old slurs. Like my grandpa used to always call gay people shirtlifters. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I just think it's the funniest image for me. <laughs> like, I know where it comes from, but it's just yeah. so funny. Yeah, um, well, that's, yeah. It's, there was a lot of that. I remember, yeah, I, remember, I think I might have said this before, but when I was a <laughs> kid, there was a, my dad, we'd watch this TV show and the guy in it was an electrician and he was gay. And um, and then every time like we'd be watching TV and there'd be someone who was quite camp on the TV and my dad would go, oh, he's an electrician, isn't he? <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Different times, more more innocent times. Oh, like, totally. Yeah, like he didn't mean it. Yeah. He wasn't being like, he wasn't being oh, derogatory. No. He was just having a laugh. No, um, I've, got, I've got a mate now that whenever she sees a gay woman and we're together, she's like, oh, one of your lot. <laughs> Do you know her? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But, I mean, like she's um, she's she's Indian, and she said I took her home to Somerset with me once, and I took her to the pub that I was working at, and there was this guy. <laughs> he's a lovely bloke, but he was just your like typical, not had any sort of interaction with anybody different to him. Yeah, Somerset guy. And she is born and bred London, supports Man United, likes a beer, likes a, her feet. And she she got herself a roast dinner and a pint. And like I think she said to it, he was wearing a Man U top, and he said she said to him, "Oh, nice one, Man U." And he shook her hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's so oh, fucking wow. funny and yeah. she saw the funny side in it like he means no harm by it but it's just literally blew his mind that yeah. this Indian woman would uh, like a pint <laughs> and be into Manu bless him well this is it it's a brave new world for lots of people mm -hmm. I was having a, I was talking to my flatmate the other day and we were talking about um, that people that we know that are now uh, there are they and not mm -hmm. like he or she, and I was yeah. trying. I was trying to have the conversation with him, and I kept just fucking it up. So in the end, I just like, should we just talk about? God, I, I don't know how to do it. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I kept going they, them, it, them. What? Not it, but you know, he, yeah. I kept getting it wrong. Like she, ah, fuck. Yeah, yeah that was that was. Oh, that's it. Someone's partner is now, and they're not a she anymore. They're a they. Right. And I'm trying to have the conversation. I just kept getting it wrong. And mispronounce and just getting it. I just and I just stood there and I went, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm yeah, trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. That is. That's. I think that that is what's important. And mm. I think, re like, being able to say, "Oh, I'm really sorry," rather yeah. than just like, because it's quite a British thing to say something wrong, maybe a little bit offensive, and then just try and act like it didn't happen. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's the worst thing to like address it and say, I didn't mean like I didn't mean yeah. to misgender you, I didn't mean to dead name you, whatever yeah. it is you've done. Yeah. And just be like, I'm really sorry. I'm gonna I'll try and be better. This is all we can do as humans. Try exactly. and be better. We're learning. You know? And there needs to and be empathy on both sides. There is needs to be understanding absolutely. on both sides. Yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, th this is something I really liked because I listened back to a couple of your episodes because I do really love this uh, podcast. Oh, nice one, thank and, you. Um, I really like that you 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 say it quite often that it, it's like life is the it's the journey, it's not the destination, and it's yeah. about just trying to be good in the moment and working on yourself. I yeah. think that's really important. And it's constant. There isn't really a destination. Yeah. It's just yeah. life. It's and then one like, day, yeah, the and then journey. one, yeah, one day you're not here anymore. So you try and be, as, try and be as good as you can. Like you can't really change the big stuff. Like you can't, yeah. you can't change what's happening in other countries. Like it, it, it's, uh -huh. it's shocking and it's sad, and you wish you could do something, but you can't really do anything about right. it. You can, you could just take care of your little area, you know, and make sure yeah. that you're as as good as you can be. 
Definitely. Yeah. 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 I think that's really important. I think taking responsibility for your community. Yeah. In ev- whatever way that is, it could be something big. It could be something small. If it could be just literally as small as checking if your neighbor's all right or yeah. whatever. And then that passes on and on and on, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think there's something, there is something in, and I, I can, it might sound hippy dippy or whatever, but there's something in, you put out if you put out positive energy into the universe it will start coming back to you and i say that as someone that has experienced that very recently uh-huh. i was in a very i was in a very negative place and so everything my my whole output was quite negative and dour uh-huh. and kind of i was in a really bad place mentally and i wasn't wasn't myself and but then i started to work on myself and start to change the bits i was unhappy with and then suddenly I was projecting all this positivity and now and now like good like positivity's coming back and now I'm hearing yeah. stories of other people that are having positive things and it's it, it does it, if you if you radiate that stuff out it does work I, I'm a I'm a strong believer in energy you know yeah and I think it yeah, works and, and like now this conversation we're having I feel I feel electric and I know I'm going to we're going to yeah, go away from this too. I'm going to go oh, I'm glad we did that Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's really cool. I'm glad that uh, that that's had that influence. I love, I'm, I'm taking that away too. I'm gonna yeah. be having a great start to the weekend. Absolutely, <laughs> it's a bank holiday. <laughs> I know. know. It's going to be nice weather. <laughs> like holy shit. Exactly. It's going to be spectacularly brilliant. What a weekend. Yes. Really great. Mate. Where did you meet your partner? May I ask? Yeah, we actually met, um, it's down to one of her best mates. Uh, She put her on this dating app Mm. um, and I wasn't looking for anything serious, but she's pretty special. So I I got over myself and went (laughs) went headfirst into the relationship. Nice. Um, So yeah, we just met on an app and had the most amazing first date I've ever had. Amazing. Um, Yeah, she's incredible. Um, I, again... Without her and my cat, I don't think my mental health would be in the place it is right now. Oh, really? Yeah. It's yeah. nice to have, it's nice to have people around you like that that can mm. lift you up rather than yeah. try to squash you. Or, yeah. You well, know. this housemate I used to have, she she told me that there in life there are drains and there are radiators. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, and she's an absolute radiator. That is but <laughs> what a beautiful way, what a beautiful way to put it. That's spectacular. <laughs> I really like that. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm taking that. That's that's yeah. going in. That's going in. <laughs> so what's next? What's next for you? What plans have you got? What's happening? Um, well, I I mean, I want to get going with the Subfun live shows. I've got that contest I'm going to do. And yep. I'm also, in lockdown, I've devised a concept for a panel show. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, it's going to be the Subfun panel show. Uh, that way I don't have to design a new logo. <laughs> <laughs> the less um, admin, the better. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, I've basically devised, it's just going to be silly little games. And each round ha- has the name of a celebrity with a pun in it, which right. is the game. Okay. And you have to say if I think that that person is fun or subhuman. Wow. I mean, that <laughs> sounds great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I look yeah, forward to so, that. That looks fantastic. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna get that together, and I think with the live shows, I'll try and do a round of that just to see how it works as a format. Um, yeah. So yeah, more podcasts, more shows. Um, I'm just excited to get gigging. Really. Brilliant. What about you? What What, what are your plans this Yeah, summer? same. Just carrying on. Keep Keep doing different things. Keeping busy so that, uh, yes. that, that so we keep the clouds at bay you know i think that's what i've learned rather than yeah and it's hard like you said earlier every now and again when it when it people don't under, really understand depression sometimes they just go mm. i'll shrug it off but sometimes it's debilitating and you lay Absolutely. in bed and you just feel so worthless and then you yeah. get into this spiral of you know you eat shit food and you whatever you're doing and and doing things that aren't good for you. And then you just end up getting further and further into it. So it does take a lot sometimes to just go, I know I need to go and do that podcast. I need to go and talk to yeah. someone. And like you said earlier, by doing that, you, it kind of pulls you out of it, doesn't it? You go, oh, I'm, glad, I'm glad I did that. Yeah. It's so easy to go, no, I'm not going to go. I'm going to pull out of these plans. I'm going to cancel it. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that's important. If you, if 
I'm going to say this to people now. If you if you make plans to go and see someone, fight all those urges to cancel. Go and see them. Yeah, it's it's so easy to to give in to that voice that says you can't. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think now more than ever, it's important to to do things. Oh, and I gotcha. think this past year has really taught me that I need I need structure and I need routine and I need yeah. I need projects. I just need yeah. projects. Well, that was it, so, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. If if there's nothing going on, make something yourself. Yeah, you know? that's it. It's that. It, yeah, the, you know, the, you, I think it's that. Yeah, the, we didn't need. We weren't needed anywhere, were we? This last year, mm-hmm. and I think that that really caused a problem. We 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 didn't have any choice, so choices yeah. were taken away. So even if you don't really want to go to the pub or you don't want to go to the shops, mm-hmm. you couldn't. You and couldn't. we didn't have the, the choice wasn't there, and mm-hmm. that really affected us. And then no one needed us anywhere. You're like human beings mm-hmm. need to be needed. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah, I think you're right. Nicola, this has been spectacular. I'm really yeah, glad we it. did this, mate. I'm really <laughs> yeah, glad. Yeah, really nice to meet you. Nice. One. Where can we find you on the socials? <laughs> oh, so on Twitter, I am Nicholas. Nicola is funny. And on Instagram, I'm Nicola Stephen is funny. And you can find details about the shows on subfun underscore on Instagram. Fantastic. Beautiful. <laughs> Really good. I love that drain and radiator, man. That is excellent. Yes. Yes. It's true. Love that. You can That's, separate yeah. people into two groups. It's true. It's true. Excellent. And you're a definite radiator. Ah, yes, mate. <laughs> Dan, you, so are you. I'm glad us two radiators <laughs> met. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> nice one, man. We need nice to go one. forward Thank with you. this positive energy. Absolutely. <laughs> That's something else as well. I always say, man. I go, oh, man. But I mean, it is a, it's an exclamation. I don't mean mm-hmm. it. There's no sexuality or gender oh, attached. Me too. Absolutely. Yeah. The same with guys. Yeah. I don't mean men. No. Yeah, I'll get a, a guy in. It's a collection. Doesn't matter what gender. Yeah, yeah, exactly. These that's it. We need to we need to claim those as genderless. Genderless yes. words. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, Nicola. This has been great. Yeah, thank you, man. Thanks, thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Cheers. All right. <laughs> Bye.